this short video is to help you understand how to use an ISO 594-2 figure 5 or figure 6 lure reference fitting. This reference fitting is used to test the ISO 594-2 male lure fitting. You will notice first that I did not call this a gauge. It's not a gauge, it is a reference fitting. It does not, it is not capable in and of itself to give you a go or a no-go, pass or fail as it relates to the part. You use the reference fitting attached to the part to then do another test on the fitting. If the fitting passes that test, then the fitting is good according to the standard based on those parameters. The standard has several different tests that they do. There are stress cracking, liquid leak, air leak, separation force, ease of assembly, you know, they go down a list and they've got this whole list of tests that you can do and you need the reference fitting to do the tests. Now, to assemble the reference fitting, what you would do is put the two together. Now I'm using extremely light force here, essentially no force. I'm stopping as soon as it gives me any resistance whatsoever. Once you get it to this point, you then apply a specific amount of force and a specific amount of torque at the same time to make the assembly. Because the force and the torque are given as maximums, you want to not exceed them. And because they are specific amounts, doing it by hand is not recommended. It's just no way you're not going to know if you've exceeded that force. It just it can't be known. So, um, when you want to know what the forces are, you'll need to go to the standard and look up the specific test you want to do and in the standard it tells you how much force and how much torque to apply at the same time. The best move for doing that is using the ISO 594 test assembly machine. You can find one at the website and uh, it's, it's once you have that machine in place you'll be able to assemble these things, you'll be able to prove your assembly is per the standard and then you will be able to move on to other tests once that has been assembled and not have your test be invalidated. Uh, people, your customer will be interested to know this, your suppliers will be interested to know this, um, and any regulatory bodies that might be looking at your test procedure if you cannot validate the force and the torque applied at the same time. These are set up so if you put on more force and more torque, you have a good probability that it's going to seal. And thus, you know, I mean, you put enough force and torque on there, you get this thing to seal, so it'll pass the test for sure. So when they built the standard, they put a limit to how much force and torque, and you need to be able to uh, validate that that's what you use to assemble it. And again, it's not, well, I put on this much force, and then I twisted it this hard, it's I put on this much force and twisted it at the same time to make the assembly and that's what you need to test for. Once you get the two pieces assembled you're good to go to do your other tests. You'll take this assembly, you will notice there is a 1 8 inch NPT female thread in the back of this which you can screw on to a 8 inch NPT pipe which can be attached to whatever mechanism is required to do your test. And that is about all there is to working with the ISO 594-2, Figure 5 or Figure 6.